Module 5, Knowledge and Understanding of the ISM Code In this module you will learn about The background and purpose of the ISM Code The 2015 Amendment to the ISM Code The background of ISM Code Change of international rules and regulations are basically accident-driven developments. For example, the Titanic brought Salas in 1914. The Argo Merchant brought Marpol and Salas Protocol 78. The Herald of Free Enterprise brought Salas 74-21. The Scandinavian Star incident raised many issues relating to fire protection and evacuation on passenger ships. The International Code for Fire Safety Systems of the International Maritime Organization's International Convention for the Safety of Life at Sea was comprehensively amended after the disaster, in 1992. This incident also accelerated the elaboration of the ISM Code. Similarly, the Prestige Incident brought in Marpol amendments of double hull oil tankers. The 9-11 incident brought in the ISPS Code. The result is that any major accident leads us one step closer to change in international rules and regulations. These regulations following an accident are reactive. Purpose of the ISM Code The purpose of ISM Code is to 1. Reduce human error 2. Have precautions against human inadequacies 3. Have better organization in the office 4. Have increased transparency and clarity. 5. Promote safety awareness. 6. Be ready for emergencies. Regulations such as the ISM code provide a broad framework for safe company and ship operations realizing. No two shipping companies or ship owners are the same and they operate under a wide range of differing conditions. Amendments to the ISM code. January 2015 In January 2015 following amendments entered into force. The first amendment was in the Resource and Personnel section in which following statement was added. The company to ensure that each ship is appropriately manned in order to encompass all aspects of maintaining safe operations on board. This amendment, which complements the Maritime Labor Convention 2006, means that compliance with minimum safe manning may no longer be sufficient when considering the operational requirements of the ship. And thus it is the responsibility of the company to ensure that the vessel is manned in excess of its minimum safe manning document. To comply with hours of rest rules and other requirements that may arise due to the operation of the ship. If additional manning is repeatedly required to comply with requirements, then the company may have to apply for a new minimum safe manning document. The onus of assessment of safe manning for any vessel is on the company who operated as it is privy to the facts of the prevailing operation. Therefore, the company would be liable for not having made a proper assessment or for not reassessing a change in circumstance of the vessel. The second amendment was in the company verification, review and evaluation section. Where paragraph 12.2 was modified to state. The company should periodically verify whether all those undertaking delegated ISM-related tasks are acting in conformity with the company's responsibilities under the code. This amendment puts increased focus on the qualifications of personnel and good work routines, i.e. the shipboard complements safety consciousness and potential to maintain safe job arrangements during all onboard operations. Thanks for watching this module. See you another time.